Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to today's um, live broadcast. My name is Abidemi Wato, and uh, we're carrying on with our journey, looking at the life of uh, men of God in the scriptures who were taken from minor to major as we're exploring the word for this year that God was going to take his body and his people as many as would believe him for it from the place of minor to the place of major so uh, this is uh, episode um, 18 in the series uh, previously we looked at the life of Joseph who went from minor in Canaan in his father's house right up to becoming the prime minister of Egypt the world power at the time and uh, in the last few uh, episodes, we've looked at the life of uh, David, another man who went from being uh, a shepherd boy, rejected by his family, and uh, who was taken to the palace to become the greatest king that uh, United Israel had. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at a season in David's life. Now, this season is very important because... As we go on our journey from minor to major, we will come across this season and our response in this season will determine to an extent how prepared we are um, when the next big break comes. Okay, so we've looked at how um, David began to exercise his gifts of grace and the attributes that, of leadership that God put in him right there on the field as a shepherd. Okay, so um, his musical talent, remember David was a psalmist. He wrote 73 of the psalms that we have available. They were songs, they were spiritual songs, and uh, he was quite musical. He played the harp or um, the lyre. Um, they're two different ones, but sometimes they exchange the words. Uh, so um, he played those skillfully, so much so that... Um, you know, he threw himself into playing those instruments and becoming a worshipper, you know, worshipping God and really getting close to God and how God revealed himself to David. David was one of the first people that knew so much about God, the different aspects of God, his caring aspect, you know, uh, the Lord being his shepherd, his light, his salvation, his fortress, his shield, his buckler, his defender. So all this revelation to David um, in that time uh, where he was rejected and um, you know he was there with the sheep but he did it with all of his heart he 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 he, he was a good shepherd he put his life at risk basically to um, save the sheep and uh, I'm sure all these things with the right attitude um, God found him found in him the uh, the person he was looking for uh, for to become the next king, having rejected Saul, who, as a result of his uh, insecurities, you know, disobeyed God's instructions so many times. And because of that, he was rejected, unfortunately. And even then, he, did, he wasn't even fully repentant. You know, this is very important because, you know, uh, God is a, is, a, is a merciful God. I mean, we, we see the example in the New Testament, we see the example of Peter, who blatantly denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, when he repented, he was restored. Uh, we also see, uh, you know, Judas Iscariot, who uh, <laughs> refused to repent or forgive himself and ended up hanging himself. You know, so our reaction to these things really matter. So let's pick up on David's, uh, this season in David's life. I I've called it David's bridge season, his bridge season. And uh, we're going to take a note of his attitude during this season. So what's happening now is that uh, there is a, a war between, a battle between um, uh, uh, the Israelites led by Saul and the Philistines, you know, their arch enemy in that time, led by Goliath, the um, giant. And uh, so we, we looked at how they were camped in a particular place, uh, Israel's army, under Saul, and then the Philistine army under uh, Goliath. So they were in this kind of situation. So let's take it from verse, First Samuel 17, from verse 12. So I'm just going to read that. Uh, it says, 
Now, David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. We knew all about that. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time, he was very old. So, David, this is one aspect of David's um, background that we didn't know before. Uh, the Bible makes us understand here that Jesse was very old in that time. Okay, I remember David was the one that was looking after the sheep. Okay, all his seven brothers had left him to it. You know, they were, you know, too, too big to <laughs> look after the sheep, basically. So it was David that was more or less, you know, uh, taking care of, you know, the father and the family as a result of looking after the sheep. Remember, they were shepherds. Okay, so, and, you know, shepherds, they count their um, wealth, uh, their well-being and whatever through, you know, their herd, their animals and so on. And they prize those animals. You know, they take care of them. The more they take care of them, the, the, the better they get out of it. So anyway, so David was the one that was actually in charge of that. So in the last few episodes, we saw how uh, as a result of his skillful exercise of his gifts of grace, he's being musical and learning how to play the instruments. And also, um, you know, uh, he's... Uh, his heart before God as a worshiper, you know, God made room for him to be able to go to the place of his major, the palace. So he was going, he left uh, being a shepherd to uh, becoming a warrior, you know, warring in, on both uh, realms, warring spiritually in the sense that as he played, whenever the devil tormented uh, Saul, as David played, which was warring the spirit, basically, as he played the, that instrument skillfully, uh, the demons left Saul, you know. But not only that, because of the favor, the amount of favor that he enjoyed in that place, um, Saul also made him one of his um, armor bearers. So he was a, a warrior in the, in the palace at that, during that season on both uh, realms. He's in... Uh, <clears throat> Let's go to verse 13. It says, Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war. You know, this war that was um, on then. So Saul was not in the palace. He was actually on the war front. Okay. So that explains why uh, David had to be going forwards and backwards. As we'll read later on. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. Okay. The three oldest followed Saul. So they were with Saul in the, at the war front. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So this is going to be very important. Because I'm going to come back to it. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. So that was um, um, uh, Goliath. Okay. Now, Jesse said to his son, David, take this ephah of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these 10 cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting against Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Okay, so that's the look at today as we look at David's bridge season. So first of all, verses 12 and 15, we see there that David began to be uh, to go back backwards and forwards, really, between the father father's house and the palace. You know, when you look at this, you know, there are two things that, that strike me there. First of all, David's caring attitude. I won't be surprised if it was David that volunteered to be going back to go and look after the father's sheep. Number one, the Bible makes us understand that Jesse was very old at that time and all his sons had left him. So there was nobody to look after the sheep. So David might have decided that he was going to go and be looking after the sheep or perhaps because of the war, and because Saul was not needing too much of uh, his soothing anointing um, anymore, so um, maybe he had more free time and he felt he would put it to better use going back to, um, you know, his former trade as a shepherd, you know. Uh, you know, there's something there that, you know, even though it's not stated, 
I fully understand that being a worshipper and now in the king's palace with all the associated uh, requirements, you know, you had to be on hand to uh, to be the um, armor bearer for Saul and also to play, to calm him down and so on. Maybe, perhaps, this is just me, <laughs> maybe David was missing you know, that presence of the Lord, you know, that he used to enjoy on his own. I mean, if you are an introvert, you can understand this. If you're not, then it's difficult for you to understand. Introverts are such that they, they like their, <laughs> that aspect of their lives. They, 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 they seek to pull away from busyness and all that, just to pull away by themselves, you know, to enjoy, you know, the peace and the quiet. So perhaps, I'm not saying that's what happened, but maybe that's what happened. So anyway, in this season, we see David going backwards and forwards. I mean, looking at that from, from the surface, you may think, oh, that's a step back. Because now he had been promoted from being a shepherd to becoming a warrior in the palace, in the place of his uh, major, you know, and that, that came about by God's favor. Yes, but you see, uh, stepping, stepping back, like I've mentioned, because he cared so much for his, his father, you know, and nobody to look after the sheep. So he decided to step back. And then not only that, there's what I call the bow and arrow principle. You know, um, this, I'm sure anybody who's going from minor to experience this. When we looked at the life of, uh, of um, Joseph, we saw this as well. Remember when, after he was sold as a slave, Okay, and then he was bought by Potiphar, and Pot he found favor in Potiphar's you know uh, eyes, and then Potiphar promoted him. Now he was the one in charge of Potiphar's house, and everything was going well. All of a sudden, uh, Potiphar's wife started to <laughs> set eyes on him, and of course, he flee he he left his clothes and just ran away from all ev appearance of evil. Like the Bible says that ended him in landed him in prison. So looking at the whole thing, you may think, wow, you know, here I was enjoying my freedom, you know, being able to put all my gifts into practice and so on and so forth. And now I'm back in prison, you know. So every now and then you get these times that looking at it from the physical is like a setback. But then when you look at it on the realm of the, in the spirit, God knows exactly what is happening because usually it's like a setup. Discover later on with David's situation here that this bridge season was like a setup for him. So he was able to demonstrate his caring attitude, you know, for the father to go and look after the uh, uh, sheep. You know, yes, he was going to be missing out, especially when he found out that, okay, the war was on. And, you know, David was his armor, Saul's, one of Saul's armor bearers. So, I mean, and he was a warrior by nature. So really, I'm sure he felt he was missing out on so much. But even though he was missing out, you know, he wasn't miserable. He wasn't miserable because he knew you know, how to utilize his time. He wasn't miserable because he enjoyed the presence of the Lord and he he threw himself into worshiping God again, you know, in like the old times, you know. So it wasn't uh, belittling. He didn't find it belittling for him to have to come back and be looking after the sheep. He did it with all of his heart. In fact, you find out that when um, uh, Jesse actually sent him on the errand to take something to the brothers, you know, uh, he had no ill feelings towards them. You know, some people don't say, oh, this is where I'd rather be. This is where I'm supposed to be. But now I'm, I'm here again. You know, I'm, it's, it's a demotion. It's a whatever. No, 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 no. David's attitude was right. He had no ill feelings towards his brothers because they had to, they got the opportunity to be in, in, in the forefront. And I'm sure those his uh, brothers, they were, it was like, mm -hmm. so now it should be you were, you were anointed. <laughs> so where, where, where's the anointing? Where has it taken you now? You're back where you were before, you know, not knowing that God knows what he was doing, all right? But David had no ill feelings. In fact, when the father called him that he should, um, he should uh, take, you know, uh, some supplies to his brothers, he, he eagerly did that. In fact, the Bible says that he was so, he was obedient, you know, he showed that he was humble, you know, still being sent. This is somebody who has been anointed as the king of Israel. It wasn't done in secret. You know, God actually anointed him and he'd, Tasted being in the palace. Now he's back, you know, looking after the sheep and then being sent on errand to go and take supplies to his brothers. It's really where that's where he's supposed to be. But he was, his spirit was right. 
And I'm not surprised because he was spending so much time with God. And this is very, very important. The time we spend in the presence of God really does something to our hearts. It prepares our hearts. It makes sure that there is no negativity that is able to, to take root there. Okay. So uh, David was, he had the right disposition. He was obedient. He was humble, you know, still being sent on errand. And uh, we see there in verse um, uh, 20. So verse 20, it says, Early in the morning, David le left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. Okay. So David was obedient. He was humble and diligent. So he didn't just say, Oh, this sheep anyway, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. I should have been in the, in the war front. Oh, sheep, you know, look after yourselves. Kind of, no, no, no. He was diligent. Caring. His caring attitude, even though he had an opportunity to taste the war front, you know. I mean, as a warrior, where else would he rather be, you know. He had opportunity to taste the war front. At the same time, he's, he was responsible. He found another shepherd, you know, took care of the sheep, made, made arrangements for them and so on and so forth. And Bible says early in the morning, he set off, you know, diligent, really diligent. Some people, they'll probably be sleeping till, long, till noon <laughs> before they wake up. You know, in my, in my, um, in my tribe, um, Yoruba, and they, they have this adage that, you know, um, morning shows the day. I think it's in English language as well that, you know, the, the morning time shows, you know, gives you an idea of what your day is going to be like. And I know in all this uh, psychology and all this motivational stuff, you know, they tell you that you, you can set the, 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 the tone for your day in the morning the, 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 as you wake up. OK, so morning time is very, very important. Diligent people, you know, get started in the morning. They, know, they plan their day. They know what they want to do. They get on with it when the energy is still high. You know, they, they set off and begin to, to do things. That's one of the, one of the uh, markers of achievers. You know, they don't waste time. <laughs> they, don't, they don't stay in bed till <laughs> noontime or evening before they get up and so on and so forth. Unless maybe they are retired. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't want to get into any trouble. But, you know, this is what happened to David. David proved that he was diligent, took care of the sheep, you know, got up early in, early in the morning, set off, you know, to, on the journey to go and uh, obey the father. And I'm sure the excitement of war front was also part of it, you know. So we see David here. Some of the things that, you know, um, would want, I want to highlight here as I round up today is the fact that, look, going from minor to major, there are times when it appears as if, it may appear as if, you know, one, one's taking a step backwards, you know, um, as if, you know, looking at it from a natural perspective, as if one's been demoted, right? right? You remember, he was promoted from being a shepherd to becoming um, the king's armor bearer and uh, warfarer, <laughs> kind of. Um, so for him to be, to be having to go back to uh, being a shepherd and looking after the sheep and so on and so forth, naturally, some people will, Re, re, it would they, if they if they don't reject it or refuse it, it would affect them emotionally. You know, they they won't put their heart to it. They they just do it nonchalantly and so on and so forth. No, no, no. It is so important that when we're on our journey from minor to major, irrespective of what happens along the way, we must maintain the same spirit, the humble spirit. You know, the diligence. You know, the 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 hard working, you know, caring nature. We must not let anything at all ruffle our feathers. Because remember, one of the things that we learn on our way from minor to major is being totally and completely surrendered in God's hands, knowing that he is the one that has planned that major. And like the Bible says, you know, it says God had preordained certain paths that we should walk in, you know, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto set unto good works, which he had prepared for us to do. In the Amplified, it says he had preordained for us to walk through. So God had preordained that path. Okay. Sometimes we may not understand it, especially when the path appears as if, you know, is, we're, we're going backwards or we're losing the promotion that we got before. No, 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 no. And that's why I call it the uh, bow and arrow principle. You know, um, remember the bow and the arrow. 
you know what usually happens is when you want to release the 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 arrow you you pull back i don't know how many of you <laughs> you know when we were young we used to play with that you know you pull back on the elastic bit with the arrow in your hand you pull it back you know you make it really go really far back because that will determine how far your arrow goes you know when you actually release it so you target it you make sure you're targeting a, a particular place that is going so you pull back to gain momentum okay so as far as you pull it back by the time you release it it determines how far the arrow would go so this kind of bridge seasons as far as i'm concerned they're like the bow and arrow uh, seasons of our lives where we take a step back to 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 uh, prepare to clarify to clarify things to gather momentum you know so that by the time we're released we're, we're ready to go really far to hit the target and in fact you know this season that we're in uh, with this coronavirus lockdown thing i i actually um want to encourage everybody to you know see this as a season a bow and arrow season whereby you know we're stepping back you know to gather momentum to to focus properly you know to 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 really pull back and see things much more clearly so that by the time we're we're released and ready to go you know we go with such momentum you know to to hit the target you know, and with such force and with such power. And we will see later on, like tomorrow, when we, when we continue in uh, David's life, we will see that, you know, he's being pulled back in this season and then releasing him, you know, was, was uh, uh, planned by God, okay? It was planned by him. Even this, uh, the father asking him to take food to his brothers and he, in his humility, decided to, oh, yes, dad, just took it, did exactly that. It was all part of God's strategy and part of God's plan, as we will see, you know, when we um, do tomorrow's episode. So, uh, I want us to learn and take something from this episode today. The bow and arrow principle. When it appears as if you're, you're being demoted, when it appears as if you're taking a step backwards, it's uh, for a particular purpose of getting clarity of, you know, focusing properly, gathering momentum so that by the time you're ready to be launched forward, then you're going to really go at such a pace and with such accuracy that, you know, you would make so much mark, you know, we have so much impact, you know, just like the, um, uh, the arrow when it is released. Okay. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please comment below. Okay. Uh, share it. Uh, like it, share it, and click notification button so you know when next I'm on air. And also, if you watch it on YouTube, make sure you comment as well. Like, share, click the subscribe button and the bell button. I'm getting really good at this now. Anyway, God bless you. And uh, let me just release a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you for everyone that would watch this. <clears throat> and I just want to uh, um, ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will take them, you know, you will help them to have heaven's perspective. You know, whenever it appears as if, you know, things are not going as planned, whenever it appears as if they're losing ground that they've already gained before, you know, help them to see it from your perspective. Help them to understand it and not allow negative emotions to, to take, get the better part of them, but that they will stay humble, stay, you know, um, plugged into you, um, stay you know, free of any negativity whatsoever in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okie doke. So I'll see you tomorrow. Um, all the best. Bye.